Okay, the Supreme Court has said that if you are a, quote, closely held corporation, uh, you know, like the Koch brothers, and you, or Hobby Lobby, or Eden Foods, now, this is, this is it's getting very interesting, because, you know, Whole Foods and uh, health food stores across America tend to be kind of bastions of liberal consumers, and Eden Foods is one of the companies who either participated in this lawsuit or wants to do the same thing, cut off their, you know, birth control to their female employees, and so there's all these petitions to, to get uh, Whole Foods to take Eden Foods products out of their stores. Louise and I have been, uh, you know, buying and using Eden Foods products since we were teenagers, as I recall. Uh, although we will, not, we will not any longer. And, uh, you know, given this, and so there's this uh, effort to, to boycott it. But in any case, the point is that the Supreme Court has, has basically said, you know, if your religion says that birth control is a bad thing, even though there's no mention of birth control pills in the Bible, in fact, to the best of my knowledge, other than God causing a couple of abortions, there's no mention of abortion in the Bible. Jesus certainly never said a word about either. You know, if you just want to limit it to Christianity. But, you know, whatever. If, if you really, you know, you read your religious texts and you think that it says this, then you can discriminate against women in terms of hiring, in terms of the way that you're compensating them, in terms of the workplace, by denying them certain types of, of health care. You can't do that to men. You can't stop men from charging your, their vasectomies or, or, for that matter, their Viagra to the health insurance companies, but you can the women. Okay. So this opens a very interesting can of worms. What if your religion is, uh, you know, very concerned about the fate of pirates? No, I'm serious. The, 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 the Kansas City School Board is teaching creationism. All right? I mean, this is happening all over the country. The federal, state, local dollars, tax dollars are being used to teach creationism, intelligent design, they call it, in both public and private schools. And so a very thoughtful and helpful uh, concerned citizen by the name of Bobby Henderson wrote a letter, an open letter, to the Kansas School Board. He said, I'm writing you uh, with much concern after having read of your hearing to decide whether the alternative theory of intelligent design should be taught along with the theory of evolution. I think we could all agree that it's important for students to hear multiple viewpoints so they can choose for themselves the theory that makes the most sense to them. I am concerned, however, that students will only hear one theory of intelligent design. Let us remember that there are multiple theories of intelligent design. I and many others around the world are of the strong belief that the universe was created by a flying spaghetti monster. It was he who created all that we see and all that we feel. We feel strongly that the overwhelming scientific evidence pointing toward evolutionary processes is nothing but a coincidence put in place by him. It is for this reason that I'm writing to you today to formally request that this alternative theory be taught in your schools along with the other two theories. In fact, I will go so far as to say, if you do not agree to this, we will be forced to proceed with legal action. I'm sure you see where we're coming from. If the intelligent design theory is not based on faith, but instead another scientific theory, as is claimed, then you must also allow our theory to be taught, as it is also based on science, not faith. Right. Church of the Fly and Spaghetti Monster, we're based in science. We're not just based on faith. Some find that hard to believe, Bobby writes, but it, so it may be helpful to tell you a little bit about our beliefs. We have evidence that a flying spaghetti monster created the universe. None of us, of course, were around to see it, but we have written accounts of it. We have several lengthy volumes explaining all details of his great power. Also, you may be surprised to hear there are over 10 million of us and growing. We tend to be very secretive, as many people claim our beliefs are not substantiated by observable evidence, what these people don't understand is that he, the flying spaghetti monster, built the world to make us think the Earth is older than it really is. For example, that approximately 75% of the carbon-14 has decayed by electron emission to nitrogen-14 and infers that this artifact is approximately 10,000 years old as the half-life of carbon-14 appears to be 5,730 years. 
But what our scientists do not realize is that every time a scientist makes a measurement, the flying spaghetti monsters, they're changing the results with his noodly appendage. We have numerous texts that describe in detail how this could be possible and the reasons why he does it. He is, of course, invisible and can pass through normal matter with ease. I'm sure you now realize how important it is that your students are taught this alternative theory. It is absolutely imperative that they realize that observable evidence is at the discretion of the flying spaghetti monster. Furthermore, it is disrespectful to teach our beliefs without wearing his chosen outfit, which, of course, is full pirate regalia. I cannot stress the importance of this enough and unfortunately cannot describe in detail why this must be done, as I fear this letter is already becoming too long. The concise explanation is that he becomes angry if we don't. You may be interested to know that global warming, earthquakes, hurricanes, and other natural disasters are the direct effect of the shrinking number of pirates since the 1800s. For your interest, I have included a graph of the approximate number of pirates versus the average global temperature over the last 200 years. As you can see, there is a statistically significant inverse relationship between pirates and global temperature. And then he goes on to thank them and say, you know, we want one-third of the school to be teaching the theory of evolution, one-third of the school to be teaching your theory of intelligent design, and one-third of the school to be teaching our theory, the flying spaghetti monster theory of intelligent design. And here's more proof. As the population of pirates goes down, global warming goes up. Christian Science Monitor. Just publish this. What, today, what day is today? The 14th. Publish it yesterday. You can find this at ChristianScienceMonitor.com. It was published yesterday. Here's the headline. Captain Phillips strikes back. Off Horn of Africa, pirates go bye-bye. The subhead. Now keep in mind, according to the religion of the flying spaghetti monster, as, pop, as the pirate population goes down, global warming goes up. We are facing a crisis, my friends. Global warming is, is, you know, look at the Arctic ice. It's vanishing. The, the, the reflective whiteness is being replaced by absorptive blueness of the ocean. This is bad news. Anyhow, the subhead of the Christian Science Monitor article, Somali pirates in 2011 attacked 237 boats in the oceans around Northeast Africa. Remember Captain Phillips? They made a movie about him with Tom Hanks. In 2004, now keep in mind, 2011, 237 attacks. In 2004, there have been seven attacks and all failed. Pirates are going down. Global warming, it's going up. So Pastafarianism Pastafarianism, a legitimate religion. Uh, there are you know, 10 million followers. They have a website. They have they have meetings. They have, they got everything. Right? They're saying we've got to do something about the decline in pirates, or our planet is going to get cooked. Now that the Supreme Court has sided with religious organizations, and our navy is being used to stop these pirates off the coast of Somalia. I think Pastafarians should be able to deduct from their income taxes the amount of money that's going to the Navy to stop the pirates. Right? It's very simple. If, if as an employer, I don't want to fund the birth control of my employees, as a taxpayer, I shouldn't be paying for reducing the number of pirates and thus increasing global warming. It's my religion. Well, it's not my religion. It's the Pastafarians' religion. But, hey, it's their religion. So if you're a Pastafarian and you own a small business, you might want to contact the Internal Revenue Service about how much you should be able to do. Actually, you, you might want to contact a lawyer and talk about going to a federal courtroom and suing to have the right to deduct the anti-pirateness from your taxes. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Right, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Anybody out there want to fight this lawsuit? Where's... where's Mike Papatonio when you need it. We got to talk to Pap about this.